This is Jen, and today we're going to cover how to install and configure Back WP Up with WordPress. Now, before we get started, you should have some familiarity with the WordPress dashboard. So, we're going to start by installing the plugin. Go to Plugins, and then click on Add New. From here, we need to search for the plugin that we want. In this case, it's called Back WP Up and then just hit return. We're going to select the Back WP Up free plugin. They also have a paid plugin, but we're just going to work with the free one for now. And then of course we activate the new plugin. And it's going to give you an introduction screen that welcomes you to the plugin, gives you a brief overview of some of the features. We're going to go ahead to Jobs, and we are going to add our first job. What we're going to do is we're going to set up two different jobs. One is going to be a weekly file and database backup, and the other will be a daily database backup. This is one of the recommended ways to keep your WordPress install up to date. Typically, your actual files are not updated that often unless you have a lot of photo uploads that you're doing on a regular basis. Whereas your database, which actually stores all of the content for your posts, your pages, all of that text, all your widgets, all of your settings are all stored in the database. Those are typically updated, uh, backed up, sorry, daily. So we're gonna do a database, a file backup, the WordPress XML export we're not going to do. That would be if we wanted to export a WordPress data file for importing into a different site, which we don't need right now. Install plugins list. This is just a text list of the plugins you have installed. One of the things that can be useful with this is if you have a large website and you may not always be backing up all of the plugins on the same job as all of the other files, having the plugins list can be helpful. And the last one here is check database tables. This is if you want the BackWP Up plugin to run a basic check on your database tables to see if they're valid. Now we have the archive name. Now personally, B10D52 is not very helpful. So we're going to call this Weekly File Database, which is a lot easier for me to read. Now it's going to ask you how you want to store this. Typically, a tar gzip gives you a little bit better compression, so we're going to go with that. And finally, it's going to ask me where I wish to back this file up to. So at the moment, we're going to click on Backup to Folder. I'll show you how to do both a Backup to Folder and a Backup to Dropbox. You very, very rarely ever want to try to send your backup to an email. Most WordPress sites are at least 20 megabytes, and that is far more than most email services can handle. FTP would be if you wanted to send it to a different FTP server, not on your own server, but on another server. And these are some additional services that you can back up with. Log files. You should enter a valid email address here because you will only receive an email if there's actually a problem and you probably want to know about that problem. We're going to click on Save Changes and our changes have been saved. See, here's your notification, changes have been saved. We're going to click on Schedule now. We're going to set it up to work with a WordPress cron, which means it's going to run on a regular basis. This job is what we're calling weekly, so I'm going to select weekly. Sunday morning, 3 a.m. is the default. Typically, most websites have low traffic at Sunday morning on 3 a.m. However, you should be careful with this setting as it will go off your server's local time, which is configured in settings general. I'm just going to quick pop this open for you. Now, I happen to live on the east coast of the United States, so I have my time zone set for New York. If you live in a different part of the world, you will want to set your time zone in settings general 
correctly for your location. Now I could click on Save Changes here, but once you have a job that already exists, as you switch between tabs, it's going to automatically save your changes, which is very helpful. See, it gives me another notification that my changes were just saved. Now, we are going to back up our tables. Now, by default, it will select all of your WordPress-related tables. If your database happens to contain tables that are not default WordPress, then you'll need to decide whether those should or should not be backed up based on your site setup. I am going to gzip my backup. What this does is it takes what's typically, let's say, a 10 gigabyte database, or sorry, not gig, 10 megabyte database, and it'll reduce it down to one or two megabytes. This saves you some space in your file storage. Next up, files. Now, uh, here you've got backup your WordPress install folder. Now these are going to be all your default WordPress files, uh, those in WP Admin, WP Includes, and all your basic WordPress files. You probably want those backed up. Next it's going to ask you about backing up plugins. Do you want to back up all your plugins? By default it's going to exclude itself. Next is themes. Typically, I only back up the themes that are actually being used on the website. In my case, Fruitful Child. It's a child theme of Fruitful, and I'm using both. And last, it'll ask if you are any uploads folders that you want to exclude. You want to exclude these if they're particularly large and don't change very often. For example, if you have a lot of media files on your website, you may wish to make a backup of your older year files and never back them up again. And last, it'll back up your standard config, robots, and other default files. Plugins. This is a list of your plugins that are installed. It's just a text file. You can gzip it if you want. I don't normally. It's a text file. It's very small. And last is our destination, where we are actually sending this backup to. Now by default it will go to your uploads folder in WordPress content, and it will give it a cryptic name. I normally just remove that part and just call it backups. File deletion. How many of these files do you want to keep? Well, 15 would be 15 weeks of these files. Personally, for me, that's a little excessive. I typically go with three to four. Now, I'm going to save changes because I'm on the last screen. It'll tell me that my changes have been saved and I can run the job now. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to build an archive. Now this process is normally pretty quick unless you have a really large WordPress website or your PHP settings are wrong. Some hosting companies by default set up uh, your PHP settings very low. You want um, typically 128 meg of uh, PHP execution memory and about 300 seconds for your uh, maximum execution time. Okay, the job completed and it's going to local storage. So I'm going to quick pull over my local storage window. This is an FTP connected and it's going to the uploads folder. And here you can see there's a logs folder, a temp folder, and a backup folder. In the backups, we can see that we have our weekly file database backup. That's what we named it. That is the current time. The year is 2016. It's the first month, January. It's the third day. It's 10 a.m., 42 minutes, and 56 seconds is when the job started.
Now for our next job, we are going to configure a daily database only backup. And this one we're going to send to Dropbox. Now typically I would send all my data, my all of my backups to the same location, but just to give you an example and show you a couple different locations that you can send things to, I am going to send one to the uh, Dropbox and one to my local storage. So this is a daily database. So we do not want our files to be backed up. I do still like to have the installed plugin list just in case a plugin was installed sometime during the week. Now I'm going to give this a more logical name again. Daily database. And this time I'm going to send it to Dropbox. Again, it will send me a log file if there's an error. I'm going to click on save. It says that I've been saved and I'm now going to go to the schedule. I'm again going to use a WordPress cron job. This time I am going to do it daily. And I'm going to set it with a slight offset from what time my weekly job runs. Otherwise on Sunday it would have two jobs trying to run at the same time. Depending on your server, it may get a little unhappy with that. So I always use an offset. I'm going to go to my database. And again, I am going to set my database to compress itself. It just makes your backup file smaller. Your plugins are just a list. It's a really small text file. I don't bother compressing it. And finally, Dropbox. So the first thing you need to do is you need to authenticate with Dropbox so that your website can access and upload files. So you're going to click on create account. I have already logged in to my Dropbox. What is going on? Oh, sorry. I don't need to create a Dropbox account, I already have one. Um, what I need to do is give this app access to Dropbox. Now what this will do is it'll only allow the website to access this specific apps back WP up folder in Dropbox. The other option is to give it full access to Dropbox. I don't personally like to do that. Click on app code. This is if you already have a Dropbox account, otherwise we need to click on create account. If you'd like to access some folder, I will click on allow, and then it's going to give me a code. I will need to copy this code, and then I will paste the code into the app section. Backup settings. This is where you want to send the backup to go. So it's in apps back WP up and then you want to give it a useful name. I am just going to call this demo and then it's going to ask you how many of these daily backups you want to keep. If you want two weeks that's 14 files. And click on save. You'll see that it now says authenticated. You have your demo folder and we're going to give this a quick run. This job should go very quickly. And done in two seconds. Now what we're going to do is I already have my Dropbox open. So we're going to go to Apps, Back WP Up, and we have a demo folder now. And here we can see we have our demo database. All set up and saved. So that is just a quick overview of how to get set up with Back WP Up and get your WordPress website backed up. Until next time, have fun!